Hello and welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia remains on high alert as the country prepares to reopen its borders. The health sector has been bolstered as St. Lucia continues the fight against COVID-19. And the business community urged to take advantage of technology. On Friday, 15 May 2020, the government of St. Lucia presented a measured five-phased approach to the reopening of the country. Officials indicated that while the COVID-19 threat looms, the country cannot remain closed indefinitely. As such, the country must remain in a state of preparedness and strict protocols implemented throughout the phases of the reopening must be adhered to. Anissa Antoine begins our broadcast. In preparation for the reopening of St. Lucia's economy, the government of St. Lucia held a national consultation on the framework to open St. Lucia's society with a view of engaging all stakeholders. The framework highlights five stages with strict protocols that have been established for the various businesses and organizations across each sector so as to ensure that the threat of COVID-19 and its spread is minimized. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belma george highlighting the importance of adhering to the protocols, indicated that St. Lucia remains on high alert given that the threat of COVID-19 persists. Dr. Belma George emphasized that the country should remain in a constant state of preparedness. The reality at this phase is that we have to um, be prepared that as we get cases, ensure our system is aggressive enough to identify them and to, to also manage them. So our expectation is that we have recurring low epidemic waves as is seen in a lot of the country, the, the region avoid the possibility of a large epidemic wave as we see in some countries within the, the international um, zones. But we, St. Lucians, we have to be prepared to live safely with COVID-19 at this point. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, stated that plans are currently being put in place by CARICOM to facilitate the opening of borders across the Caribbean. The Prime Minister explained that although the borders will reopen, St. Lucia's tourism source markets may still be facing restrictions on travel. We believe genuinely that through testing, we can significantly reduce the risk. And so we have to anticipate that very soon that there will be a rapid test um, that globally is accepted, that at least can reduce the risk of a person having COVID before they travel. And certainly we must continue with the protocols of taking person's temperatures, watching person's behavior, and at the same time, making sure um, uh, that if in fact they show any symptoms, we have the ability to isolate them quickly. Reopening our borders also means that we must get our local population to have confidence in what we're proposing in order for them to be able to go and work in those places and know that they're going to be safe. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, explained the protocols being put in place to mitigate against the potential risks that may arise. We believe that we've got the protocols ready. So one of the main ones you would have heard is the fact that you've got to test uh, COVID-19 negative before you can actually board. So we've made that uh, one of the requirements in order for individuals to check in. So uh, the list of protocols from the seating arrangements on the airplane to the uh, taxi trip to the hotel to uh, the number of buffets you're going to have in the hotel environment to the uh, situation on property where staff will have to be wearing the various uh, PPE protective gears, uh, where uh, you must have quarantine rooms, for example, uh, you must, uh, for example, have a nurse and property to deal with any medical situation. The opening of St. Lucia's borders is slated for Thursday, June 4th, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. St. Lucia, as of Saturday, 16th May 2020, has recorded a total of 18 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and 100% of these cases have recovered, placing St. Lucia at a 100% recovery rate for the second time.
All 18 of these individuals have since reintegrated into their communities. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney, speaking on the national television network NTN on Saturday, said that while the country has achieved a milestone, the COVID-19 threat remains. The Prime Minister disclosed that as the country gears up to reopen its doors, its capacity to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic has been substantially increased. We have confidence in the team that we have. We have confidence in the protocols that we've put in place that if in fact there is going to be an outbreak that we could manage that outbreak. We're also confident because we have moved into OKEU and we're now physically preparing Victoria Hospital to be a full respiratory hospital. We've secured resources from the World Bank and they have amended all kinds of protocols to allow us to implement that project in record time. And we're talking about, if I'm not mistaken, 91 beds and 70 isolated rooms. Despite the difficulty, and I have to say to you, um, the difficulty in getting and procuring PPE equipment with the assistance of Taiwan and the assistance um, of many other countries around the world, we have been able to acquire our fair share of PPE, including respirators. I understand that we have 14 of them either have arrived or are about to arrive on island. So we do have uh, a proper facility to deal with um, an outbreak. We've certainly increased our capacity a thousandfold by what we have done. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney commended the hard-working men and women who continue to put their lives on the line for the health and safety of all St. Lucians. The effects of the COVID-19 pandemic are far-reaching and have left no one untouched. Members of the business community have been forced to take advantage of technology now more than ever before. A panel speaking on the national television network NTN on Sunday, 17th May 2020, brought into focus the digital economy and the many benefits of technology, especially during this time. Details in this report. The advent of the COVID-19 pandemic and the constraints and challenges imposed on society and people's lives by the virus have incited an enormous effort towards innovation and development. As such, the digital economy is being used as a source of resilience and competitiveness to mitigate the effects of the virus during this time. This is especially critical to the business community as it has been hard hit by the pandemic. Director of the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Fiona Hinkson, explained the importance of integrating technology into a business to ensure its survival. Traditional sectors can become more resilient more competitive through the use and adoption of digital innovations, basically. So with the tr digital transfusion that is happening across the globe, permeating every single sector within an economy, changing the way we live, the way we work, learn, socialize, and so on, the, um, the traditional sectors can become more resilient. So I believe they are intertwined. They do not, the digital economy do not exist in so isolation of its own is basically used to improve processes. You have online banking, yeah. e-commerce, the online banking replacing long lines at the bank. You have e-commerce versus visiting a mall, manufacturing automation and so on. So the list goes on. So um, even post-COVID, I believe that we'll see even more acceleration, more um, you know, transformation with the digital economy. Sherilyn Monroe's Gustave, Chief ICT Officer at the Division of Public Sector Modernization, encouraged individuals to take advantage of the opportunities arising from the digital transformation. This is no longer the status quo going forward. Absolutely. You cannot depend on the traditional economy alone. You need to now invest in ways. So you, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, etc., you may not have the skill set in terms of being able to promote your goods and services online, but there are certain companies or, or different, different options that you can avail yourself to in terms of providing, um, of having that digital presence. So the threat is only if we don't 
try to change it. If we stay rooted in the old ways, then of course it would be a disruptor, as you indicate, and we would stay behind. But if you really want to catch up, the world is moving ahead. I think COVID has shown us the world is moving ahead. There's no turning back at this point. The chief ICT officer noted that the Division of Public Modernization is currently in the process of updating the national ICT and sectoral policy. We've engaged the private sector, all the different sectors, um, in terms of contributing and providing that guidance in terms of how they see ICT benefiting them, their sector. And we're going to use this to come up with this IC, national ICT and sectoral policy that we're going to then use in terms of uh, guiding um, the government in terms of the different programs, etc., that can be developed um, for especially the persons like entrepreneurs, persons who really don't have, they, other, they don't know how to move forward into this digital economy. According to the Digital Economy Report for 2019, the digital economy accounts for approximately 39 million jobs globally and the digital deliverable exports amount to 50% of the global services exports. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market past through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of LPG 20, 22 and 100 pound cylinders has changed. The retail price of gasoline, diesel and kerosene remains unchanged. The price changes take effect from Monday, May 18, 2020. Gasoline remains unchanged at $11.50 per gallon. Kerosene remains unchanged at $7.15 per gallon. Diesel remains unchanged at $11.92 per gallon. The 20-pound cylinder decreased from $27.24 to $26.19. The 22-pound cylinder decreased from $29.96 to $28.80. And the 100-pound cylinder decreased from $158.31 to $147.71. The next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on Monday, June 8, 2020. And this is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment of vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Ensure that farm clothing and gear is clean. Wash hands thoroughly before harvesting crops. Use face masks and head ties whilst harvesting, cleaning and packaging crops. Use all safety precautions when transporting crops to the markets and depots, such as handling crates and crops with only clean hands and covering sneezes and coughs with a tissue or the inner arm to ensure body fluids or droplets don't get on produce and washing hands or using hand sanitizer after using the tissue. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for today's novel, Aquayol. Monsieur Tan Chanel, Monsieur Madame, Department of Kinivest Consabilité, with formation en gouvernement cette ici, ça c'est GIS, à ce mépris télévision national PIA NTN, qu'à présent au nouvel Aquayol. Présent au Primus Hutchinson. Vendredi passé, Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney et puis les Grecs 
en diverses bureaux au gouvernement, principalement chef officier médical Dr. Sharon Belma George, te joué ensemble et puis certains membres du secteur privé pour faire un annoncement pour vivre ouvert aux formations normalement en cette ci en bas maladie corona. Activité a été prévu en sorte financière après sa fin et te paraît face à public à sa télévision NTN. A parmi ces annoncements qui peut se porter, commencer lundi, lundi, le 18 à mois de mai, ces zones qui te cas placé restriction à ce bon en façade nord et sud pays pour te voyager, j'ai sorti. Alors, l'autre passager est privé et aussi public là, ça a voyagé, sorti en façade pays pour l'autre. Encore, là aussi, il n'y a que fio neuf qui a commencé à 9h au soir pour 5h au matin. Mais, ces faux publics là savent que tout le report qui a continué à rester fermé et aussi la WAD. Au cas où vous qui avez conduit un bateau privé, pas supposé servir la mer pays et la pas supposé une pièce d'activité sociale bord de la mer. L'église qui parle pour conduire un service à corps, car il peut faire une application pour le ministère de l'égalité avant de virer commencer le service religieux. Selon Dr. Belma George, le gouvernement a aussi considéré pour implémenter la quatrième phase en continuation de l'opération pays là, commencer le 1er juin. Mais selon Dr. Belma George, PIA a continué sérieusement pour conduire des tests et aussi pour changer à support et la de pays là pour faire assurer qu'il y toute protection contre la maladie de Corona. Les autres pays en région ont gardé cette liste comme un grand exemple en bataille là pour ménager la maladie de Corona. En parlant de ça, le gouvernement a aussi annoncé ses places business institution et bureau au gouvernement qui a en opération et tient en troisième phase de pays qui a ouvert l'opération. En ce place-là, qui a commencé l'opération depuis lundi 18 en mois de mai, c'est service de santé, service de docteur, service de l'hôpital, pharmacie, magasin des affaires médicales, place business qui a vendu des sweet drinks, service de manger, la pêche avec les femmes et bien les cultivateurs, opération de l'eau et service de courant, Télécommunication, sanitation, service pétrole, garage et service business loto, business qui a vendu des outils et des matériaux pour divers états et travail, service financier et opération de l'audience et service loi et justice. L'autre business qui a une permission pour opérer, mais en bas plus de direction, c'est opération bord de la mer, place des exercices physiques, opération de sport. Opération des places média, business pétrole, petit boutique, business mall, les agences gouvernement et les établissements religieux. Ces places business là, quand ils pour faire une application pour le ministère qui place business yo ka répondre pour, pour trouver autorisation pour opérer. Bureau des affaires santé, le ministère de santé, j'ai fait un appel qu'a crié à son public pour continuer pour observer les règles qui en place pour protection de la maladie de Corona. Nous voyons des questions à ce NTN. Officier en bureau Salah, Mamzel Naomi Grandison, expliquer la signification de ces règles là pour la santé publique là et faire comprendre que le pays a confié toujours et que les gens sont rester en caillot. Il y a 6 pieds de distance à l'autre, le service sanitaire, la ville en main et puis de l'eau et de savon en parmi l'autre. Mais il y a aussi qu'à comprendre les membres publics qui ont expérimenté des difficultés de temps en temps. Mamzelle Grandison a conseillé pour les gens qui ont fait pour chercher de différentes façons pour rester actif et pour tenir ses vélos à repos pendant qu'ils ont suivi ce que ça a. Il s'est tué les gens, il s'est fait les gens malades, il s'est fait les gens pour l'hôpital et les ventilateurs, ils n'ont pas eu pour l'exploration. Nous savons ça. So, qui est qui solution? Distance là. Mm -hmm. Ok? Distance sociale. Social, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, parler parler de la monde, si vous regardez, si vous stress. Mm -hmm. um, faire routine, le ou home. Mm -hmm. Pour ne pas juste accorder ou qu'à dormir la whole journée. Et c'est ce que je dis à Maïla. Quand vous êtes descendu, vous avez fait des ordres. Vous avez pu mettre la routine. Puis, le outil ou um, kachil ou a ce problème là mm -hmm. et ou, ou savent que ça ou, ou ka, ka contrôle, c'est ça ou ka fait un moment. Mm -hmm.
Et comme ça, madame, c'est comme ça. Nous avons trouvé une nouvelle aujourd'hui là. Je vais remercier autant pour regarder, pour avoir une invitation, pour gérer plus encore. C'est-à-dire, quand ça fait la vie, nous avons trouvé une autre nouvelle à Coyol. Après ça, nous avons vu une présentation de Janelle. Merci, Appel Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.